you ever gotten that? And it's like, come on, right? And then, <coughs> that's a soft inquiry. They actually went behind the scenes, pulled your credit, sent you a letter that says, call us today, you can feel free, because they already looked at your credit. Now, they're not telling you that the credit card could be 30%, something like that. So I strongly advise you to just tear them up, right? But that's a soft inquiry. The only time your credit score goes up when you pull your credit report is when you go apply for credit. So if you go to Dillard's, if you go to Firestone, if you go to JCPenney's, and they tell you, apply for our credit card and I'll give you 20% off. Have you ever heard that? And, and they say, you say no, then they say, we'll still give you 20% even if you're denied. Why? Because girlfriend gets um, a bonus for every application she gets, whether you're approved or not. And then even if you're denied or approved, your credit score goes down. You're absolutely right. So I want you to be very careful. The holidays are coming and everybody's going to be after you to get a credit card. Don't go for it because you don't need it anyway. Right? And so with that, say no, don't fill out anything. It's dropping your credit score. So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Good, good point. Anybody else? Okay, so we're going to clear up our credit. How are we going to do it? We're going to look at anything that's six or seven years old that's about to fall off. Next, we're going to look at settlements. And I want you to start low on settlements, and I want you to be nice, and I want you to be pitiful. I want you actually, no, it's not in here. Uh, I want you to be polite. I want you to be pitiful. And I say pitiful, I'm talking about humble. It just doesn't start with a P, right? And I want you to be prayerful, and I want you to be persistent and I want you to be patient. So when they say call back, you gotta talk to our supervisor. I want you to say no problem, thank you, I'll call back. When they say hi, how are you? I want you to say I'm fantastic, how are you? Because as a bill collector for 30 years, believe me, we know the customers that we talk to that are nice. You know people are mean? Anybody, show of hands. Have you ever talked to somebody? You're like, holy bananas, what's your problem? Right? Is it just me? And so be nice. It will get you more. I promise you it will get you more. And then when they say, no, we can't settle for that, then I want you to go into the pitiful spiel. This is how much I have. It bothers me that I owe you. I know I owe you. I know I owe you. I, owe you. I have paid you $20,000. Why? Because I'm concerned about it. But that's all I have. I got another $2,000, and I can sell this, listen to this, today. Don't call the seller accounts if you don't have the money. You're talking about next week, next year, next month, when I get my income tax, when the couch, uh-uh. I'm talking to you as a bill collector now. They don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. If you're talking, you have money today, they will sell. I have the money right now. I can write you a check today. I can send you the money. Western Union today. I can t give you a check over the phone today, and that has more weight. Right now is a good time to settle because we will, I mean, right, we will take settlements at the end of the month because we're desperate because we have to hit goals. Does that make sense? So the end of the month, the 30th, will be here in a second. And if we haven't hit our goal, we're more apt to take your $300 settlement on a $3,000 bill because we're desperate. If you call around the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, I got 25 days left. I'm not going to take that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It depends. They have a right. They have they have a legal right to to not uh, eradicate. It's up to the company's choice. And quite often, we would eradicate. You call me because you want to take care of it, and because no skin off my back. I you know I I'll just take it off for you. And so, but you've got to ask because if you never ask me, I'll never do it. And so if they do good, if they don't, that's okay. You haven't lost anything, but my company would eradicate. I'll tell you what we would. When you're going to buy a house, quite often if you have bad debts, they require you to pay off everything that you owe before they give you that house. So if you're going to buy a house or a car and you have to pay off your debts, never, ever tell us that because I won't settle because I know you have to pay. Does that make sense? So if you call me and say, uh, Miss Glover, I owe you $2,000. I'm trying to buy this house. They're telling me I have to pay you. I want to pay you $500. No, because I know you have to pay me, and I want $2,000. Does that make sense? So never tell them why you have to pay. Just tell them you want to pay. And now, oh, you, you call. Oh, you're concerned. Let me give her eradication. That would be nice. And then if you're talking to somebody who's a, a booty, you know, just, you know, you know what I'm saying? then I want you to refund and talk to somebody else. 
because I promise you, it's somebody else there who will help you. Because some bill collectors are just me. And you tell, I'm like, really? And so with that, you don't get all in a tither. You don't get all upset. What you do is you refund. You know, I, I tell the same story, and I'm sure I told it last year when I was in Florida, how my water got cut off. You remember that story? And and the lady told me she's not getting my water back off. And I said, okay, thank you. And I just refund. And before I come home, I put my hand on the floor. I'm, Lord, you got to give me somebody with grace and mercy. Lord, I'm having water. Got to have water. Got to have water. Come on, really? Please, Jesus. Refund, I said the exact same thing. I promise you, I didn't change one word. And the lady said, when do you get paid? I said, Friday. She said, give me a post date check for Friday, and I have somebody out to cut on your water in 15 minutes. And I hung up, and I said, if you let me, you could have did that. So sometimes you are talking to people who have issues. And some people want their issues to be your issues. Amen? Always remember that when you're talking to folks. It ain't about you, it's about them. What's your problem, girlfriend? Right? Okay. Amen. Did that answer that, girlfriend? Okay, great. Good questions. Any other questions? Okay. Um, at the bottom of page eight, um, so if you have a dispute, I want you to put it in writing. Um, it's sample in this packet, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Be specific, don't be long-winded in, in your writing. Your last sentence should be what you want them to do. Um, not my account, please remove. Older than seven years, please remove. This is a junior, this belongs to my son, please remove. Whatever you want them to do should be your last action. If it's a fraud account, you could just say fraud, I've never been in JCPenney's, please remove. They're going to send you paperwork, affidavit of fraud, all of that. They'll tell you what to do. Whatever they need you to do, fill it out, send it back, because if they can't prove that you legally, they have to take it off. So yeah, he got to do some leg work, but it's worth it, uh, rather than paying somebody five, six hundred dollars to fix your credit. Now, on the bottom of page eight are all the phone numbers. See TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian under K. If you cannot pull your credit report, call them. They will mail it to you. If you have a dispute and you have questions about the dispute, you can call the credit bureau companies, and they do have live. Uh, people there to answer the phone and answer your questions. And the phone numbers are already here listed for you. Okay? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I love this, you guys. that doesn't work. Then I want you to wait because I think they're going to drop medical bills. Okay? And then if not, I want you, every hospital guys, and they don't tell us this, but every hospital has a, um, it's, it's, um, it's almost something called like a goodwill unit that they pay for surgeries and stuff from a, a, a money pot that they have in the hospital. And I don't know what it's called. You know what that's called? Charity. A charity. It isn't. It's like a charity or something. Every hospital has it. They gotta tell you that. So I would try to go down that route too. But I would keep disputing it until they get tired and eventually they'll take care of it. Because I would lay my hat on you said you back me. And they've got money. Medical bills? Yeah. But it's not as heavy as like a judgment and a mortgage and a car. As a matter of fact, if you look at what's in order and the strength of what affects your credit, it's, it's, it's government loans, 
then judgments, then liens, then mortgages, then vehicles, then credit cards, then medical. Everybody got it? So medical bill doesn't have a lot of strength on your credit report anyway, but it's enough to drop your credit score. You said our child, our child, our, our, our son's credit doesn't affect our own. Oh, the first son? Our credit card bill doesn't affect our own. Is he under 18? Is yes. he under yeah, it will. I'm sorry. I thought you said how does it affect it. Yeah, but the child's credit will affect you until he is 18. So it's, it's probably on your form. Or if you dispute it, it may end up like hers where they just say dispute it, then it won't affect you. So I would definitely dispute it. Okay? Good, thank you. Student loans affect you, and they, and they, they have a deep cut because a lot of them are government backed. And student loans can garnish your wages. Because a lot of people don't know, in Texas, you can't be garnished except for the government, right? North Carolina, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, you cannot be garnished by any medical, Sears, J.C. Penney, but student loans, child support, spouse support, can. And so with that, what you want to do, I promise you, I have owed a lot of student loans. And every time I call to make arrangements, they make arrangements. So if you make arrangements, say if they're really past due, you want what's called that if you show payment administration, you should pay me six months in a row, I'll make your account current. And then if you do that, they'll make it current. And then after a while, you ask them, what can I sell this? How much can I sell it for? How much do you need that I can call this a day? If you're in um, the health field, teachers, nurses, police, firemen, that field, um, doctors, and you stay in that field 10 years, they will wipe your entire student debt off. Yes, people don't know that. You know how to clear up your student debt? That's what they're talking about. Any health field, they will totally clear off your student loan. But you have to show that I was a teacher for 10 years. And then if you were a teacher, nurse, doctor, fireman, all of that police, they will wipe out your student loans. Legally, if you owe student loans for 25 years, whatever you owe at the end of 25 years, they will not have a fall off. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have two questions. Uh -huh. The first question is, I don't need to learn about Obama and the What is the cost of student loans? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, it's a law that is passed by President Obama, but if you're going to And so when you call and say, I need my car, how can you help me keep my car? Pause. 
and they got to help you figure it out. But the catch is, whatever they're asking you, answer it. You know, how much do you make? You used to make this. What happened? Da 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 da. Just answer it because you need help with the situation. So yeah, I do like that. But yeah, they will help you. They'll help you. With that. Okay. Okay. Well, I heard that if you can stay in school for 10 years, but they put it like a duration of 10 years to take the student money away, no matter how much you pay or how much you make, for you to complete the, the loan. So they said, as long as you stay in a student, yeah. and you were able to be like 10 years, because I've heard a lot of people, they be, and a lot of the commercials say, they want to help you to raise your student loan, you don't need to pay. And I've heard a lot of my friends, they'll be like, okay, they want to remain student forever uh -huh. until the government removes the student loan. So what can you really say? I pay my student loan every month. Uh -huh. Should we just leave it and remain student forever or just say you, 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 you sound like my husband. He's like, you're going to pay. I, I'm just going to be a professional student. <laughs> he has a master's, he's still taking classes, and he owes a hundred billion trillion dollars. And that's because they invite you to go back to school, don't they? I mean, we know you owe, but we will take this loan and we'll pay with the other loan, and you won't owe it because you're still in school. But see, that's the catch, because eventually they know you're going to get tired of going to school, and then bingo, all this money's going to be this. So you have to stop and say, enough. I'm smart enough. I like this job. Now, I got to figure out how to get you out of my pocket because I'm tired of getting that student loan mail because it comes every other day. Anybody notice that? Student, they, they got a lot of stamps. And so you got to say, I'm tired of it. And you tell me the quickest way I can get out of debt with the student loan, and they'll work with you. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay.
you're being late on anything is 35% of your credit score. So if you are 30 days late, it is affecting your credit score tremendously. So whatever you do, I, in, in my younger years, I enjoy having money on me. I couldn't stand to be broke. I needed to have 60, 70 dollars in my purse. Now, if you kidnap me, you don't have nothing coming but a lesson on how to save. Because <laughs> I don't care anything about being broke anymore. I just want to be here. And, and so with that, I make sure that the bills are paid on time. So make sure you pay on time. Take advantage of online bill payments. Uh, bank of, I, we bank with Bank of America, and I haven't mailed a, a payment out in forever. Because you can just do it on the phone, um, over the computer, and you hit when you want it to get there, and you're done. So if you don't know how to do that, get some of these young teenagers to show you how to sign in. Don't overspend. We like stuff. Amen? We just like stuff. Stuff is pretty. I like her outfit. I like her whole outfit. I like the blue. I love that. And if I saw it in the store, I would buy it. I love it. And if I get skinny, I'm going to beg for it. So, but we can't do it. Because our focus now is on tomorrow. Does that make sense? Because yeah. tomorrow is here. 56 came quick for me. So you got to say, if I remember 16, I don't know how old you are, but didn't the next 20 years fly by? And so you got to say, who's going to take care of me at 76? You got to take care of yourself. And how do we do that? We got to stop spending. Because let me tell you something. It's no joke. They're out to get us to spend. You need to know that. The average person who's making thirty to a hundred thousand dollars is the average consumer. They're not worried about the person who's poor. So the person who's making ten thousand and kind of just make it, they don't care. They don't care about the super rich because that's not the people who can buy a lot of stuff. They're worried about the person who can go to Dillard's and buy a pair of shoes that cost sixty nine ninety nine because I need to sell two hundred pair of those. Does that make sense? They're worried about the one who can go to Walmart and buy twelve cans of pork and beans even though we don't need them because. The yellow player's balloon is over, so we run over there. Am I the only one that does that? That balloon, I can't stand those balloons. And so it, it just grabs me. And so with that, we have got to stop overspending. And in order to do that, we've got to have a budget, and we're going to talk about that. And then uh, number five, I do want to tell you, circle number five, you have to understand that if you negotiate any settlements, they consider that... Um, and earned income, and you will get a 1099C from income tax. So I do make sure that you know that. So if you settle that medical bill, that's $2,000 for $300, they're gonna say $1,700 was earned income. I still think it's worth it, but you just gotta to talk to an income tax person and say how this is affected, okay? Everybody see that on number five? Number page 10, number five? Everybody with me? Yes, okay. Um, create a financial strategy. Don't more, buy more houses than you can afford. The Joneses are broke. Don't worry about what girlfriend has, how she's looking, what he has, what they're driving. You have to do you. And a lot of trouble we're in is because we're mimicking somebody else and we want to be like them and we don't know what, pray tell, is going on in their household. So I thank you, Lord for my door. I thank you, Lord, for my keys. I thank you, Lord, for my carpet that's so dirty in the front room, but it's mine. Amen? Okay? And, and, and I, I'm just not going to cover yours. I, I don't have time for that. Plus, if you, if you, I'm just not going to do it. Okay, um, don't raise your 401k, number 10, for anything. If you buy a house, go to it. But if you lose your job or anything, I do not want you to touch your savings. I only suggest touching your savings if you're about to lose a home or anything. But if you lose your job, you just go make to until God blesses you with a good job. Do not touch your savings. Know your limits. Have a limit. Be realistic. Do not charge vacation, food, or clothes unless you can pay it off in 30 days. We cannot go home just to go home on a credit card if we can't pay it off in at least at least days. Because that trip home is going to cost you double if you pay it at a minimum rate every month. Does that make sense? Okay, so can't do it. 
Okay, shop around for the best rates, car mortgage inquiries. Oh, and I told you about the inquiries, my sister. But if you shop for a car or a house, anything you shop for in 45 days is one inquiry because they know you want to shop around. So if you go to Chrysler, Credit, Ford, Quarter Company, BMW, whatever, within 45 days, they'll say that's one. So keep that in mind when you're shopping. And then keep your balances low. Pace yourself when attempting to obtain credit. And number 21 is what? Make do. Make do. Make do. Everybody on my family, my block had 11, 12, 13 kids. Everybody ate. Everybody had clothes. We all hung out together. And we can't raise three kids. We got to go back and say, how did we used to do it? Am I right? I didn't know my grandmother and grandfather even used to, to, to vote, but they had money. We have got to learn how to make do. Amen? Amen. And then Proverbs 13, 18. He who ignores discipline comes to poverty. Amen? And shame. But whoever heeds correction is honored. You know, God will honor our ability to try to do what's right. He will honor the fact that you're here and that you want to make a change. And, and broke will embarrass you. Amen? Especially when you broke for some things that I did incorrectly. My, my whole testimony about getting to Detroit and I didn't have the money was embarrassing to me because I blew money. It wasn't because I didn't have it. It's because I chose stupid things. Amen? Now, on page 11, financial position. I just want you to put a star on this page because this is put homework at the top of page 11. I don't want you to go back through this book. At page 11, I want you to ask yourself, is my financial situation due to um, a situation, meaning that, you know, the roof fell in, somebody died, I had to pay for the funeral, I had to go back home to give money to somebody, um, um, uh, the roof fell in, I had a fire, whatever, or was it gratification? And that's personal. Because you got to ask the Lord, why do I need to change? Why am, why am I not in a financial peace that you would want me to be in? Was I blowing money? And what was the gratification? Was it because every pair of shoes that I could walk in, I would buy them? If they were on sale, I thought they were on sale just for me. And I would get them. And my husband, bless his heart, told me one time when I got home, I want you to walk away from what you buy. And if you remember it, I think I told you that I want you to go back and get it. Because I'll see something that is pretty and I just buy it. And then it'll sit in my closet. Anybody ever get that? Because I'm so in the store now. I'm just in it. And that's because we are always hungry for something. And Ephesians 5 18 says, Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. And the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit has to constantly be flowing in us. And when we're feeling empty, we're trying, we're looking for something to feel that. And now I have to say, Lord, feel me. Give me the satisfaction that I need. I don't need that stuff because it was breaking me. Amen? So that's your homework, and I want you to figure, uh, finish that page. Page 12 just tells you a little bit of how your credit affects you. You see the gray in there? If you are 30 days late and your score is 680, it's dropping your credit score 60 to 80 points. Do you guys see that? And so that's just a lot, okay? And then bankruptcy uh, drops you 130 to 150 points, so do not believe um, the stuff with um, five bankruptcy you can have good credit. How is that even possible? They're saying don't pay anybody and we'll have good credit. So you know that's a story. And if you're over 12, it's not. And so with that, you've got to know, do everything you can prior to filing bankruptcy. But bankruptcy is a law to protect you. So if you're just drowning and there's no way out, then yes, file. But if you can find a way out first, do that. Because everything that you buy henceforth is going to cost you more than your next door neighbor. Because the interest rate is going to cost you more. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now I want to pass out something called news you can use. Hey. I teach.
that Workforce Solutions in Dallas, the unemployment offices, and I created this for them. But I figured this is just some really, really great information. Um, like, uh, two places kids eat free. If I had little ones, that's what we'd be eating when it's time to go out to dinner. Um, free government money is a website. Um, how to survive unemployment if you're not working is a really good website. And then a lot of people don't know, but there are actually cell phones that are free. Did you guys know this? Yeah. If you have, if you're on social services, if you're a senior citizen, if you have get anything like snack or anything like that, you can get a free phone. You get 500 minutes a month, and it's absolutely free. And it's any of these under free cell phones. Do you guys see that? So call and, and see what opportunities are there for you. Knowledge is power. And then the senior source under good info, this thing has a lot of stuff if you're over 50 years old. Places to eat, places to rent an apartment, um, how to get a job, how to get free everything under senior source. So go there. If you know anybody who has a criminal background and they need help, um, you can use that criminal background job help because not only do they pull your credit report, but they pull a criminal background report too. So if you know anybody who had problems with finding a job because they had a felony or something like that, give them that website. And then there's virtual websites, I mean uh, workshops, that you can, for job seekers, how to build a resume, uh, how to interview, what to wear to a resume. Are you guys aware that, oh, anybody, anybody looking for a job? Maybe looking for a job, want a different job? Yeah. Okay, then that's it. Okay, maybe. Because uh, a lot of people don't know, they don't even um, acknowledge resumes that have paragraphs anymore. Resumes have to be bullet points, sentences. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And so even if your teenage kids or somebody you know that's looking for a job, you need to tell them to go on the website to see how to build resumes now. Because people just don't feel like writing. I mean reading, okay? And then my favorite on here, you see where it says Trinity Auto Sales? Has anybody ever heard of them? It is the coolest. Trinity Auto Sales has a grant that if you are a full-time student, if you are a senior citizen, if you get SNAP or food stamps or unemployed, if you bid for one of their cars, they will pay half. Did you know that? Is that not great? That is great. So if you are looking for a car, if you see a car there, they let you check it out, of course, go under the hood, you bid $2,000. If the car costs $2,000 and you get it, they pay 1000 and you pay 1000 so if you know anybody who's looking for a car, or who's a student, or needs help, you need to call Trinity Auto Sales. And here's the deal, they have a grant. And I tell people, jump on this now, because grants are wear out. They run out, they run out of money. But they still have money now, and I think they have the auction every Friday and Saturday of every week. So definitely call Trinity Auto Sales. Any questions on that? Now, at the bottom, um, socialsecurity.gov, if you go on there, it'll tell you how much you earned in social security already. I go on there maybe every three or four months, and it'll tell you, if you retire today, Rochelle, this is how much you get. If you went on disability, this is how much you get. And then financialfinance.com will tell you how much um, your net worth is. And when I talk about net worth, guys, I'm talking about here are all your debts, here are all your um, assets, your house, your car, your jewelry, any checking accounts, any, any savings, any, anything like that. And then you need to figure out what's your work. And I actually created a sheet. Can I give it to you? Um, to help you figure out your net worth. And I'll find Okay, any questions on that? Okay, any questions? Any questions? All right, then we'll move on. So keep that information, <clears throat> and I'll find those in a minute. Now go to page 15. Oh, we got a large clip. The one thing I want to tell you about identity theft is that cyber theft is the big thing right now. They are actually stealing your identity from stores. So they don't have to go try to find it in your mailbox and all that. They're stealing from Target. 
They're stealing from Sally Beauty Supply. They're stealing from Lord and Taylor where they're actually stealing their database. And if you ever use your debit card there, they're swiping everybody's information. Uh, Sally's Beauty Supply has had cyber theft three times in about two years. Target, you guys remember that last year? Target's a big giant, right. Send me a letter, we, you know, we don't see anything, but you can pull your credit report for free, blah, 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 blah. So you have got to watch where you're using your card. Um, somebody used my card, uh, and, and Bank of America called and said, we're, we called it, we're sending you a new card, and, but they took $300 out of your account. What? And so I said, where? And they said, they won't tell me. And I said, you won't tell me where I misused my card, so I won't go there. And they said, we can't tell you, but where do you get gas? And I get gas at SIPO, is that C I T G O? Whatever that is. Uh -huh. Right there. And and he goes, Well, oh, okay, that sounds like it. And so somebody had swiped my car or got my numbers while I got gas there and got three hundred dollars. So you have got to be very careful with identity theft. Because it is professional hackers out here. And if they're sweeping thousands of people, that's why it's very important that A, you look at your credit report. Because sometimes they just take Time, so you won't notice. Ten dollars, then fifteen dollars, like that. So you've got to watch yourself. Ladies, coach your purse when you're out. When you throw away your mail, track, um, shred it or burn it or tear it up. Do not just throw out envelopes, especially the pre-approved. I used to just look at it and just throw it out. Don't do that. Tear it up. Okay. Any questions on identity theft? And I'm just moving so I can get us out here. Sorry. Okay. Page 15. Page 16, just real quick, is second chance checking. And second chance checking is for people who don't have a bank account from mainstream uh, USA. Meaning that you don't have a bank account with Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Chase because maybe you had some NSFs or something like that. But they came up with second chance checking which says you can come back to us for a fee of $5.95 to $8.95 a month and then after six months of paying on time we will make you a regular account. So if you know anybody who's been kicked out of banks, dream banking, you can go to Second Chance Checking and they will give you a bank account. And that came on the heels of people having, people having so many prepaid cards. Because you know prepaid cards cost a lot. Every time you use them, there's a fee. So they'd rather you use a regular bank account. And this gives us the opportunity to go back into regular banking. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay. Page 17. <coughs> Dealing with creditors. Bill collectors are the nicest people you will ever talk to, but when they are not, you need to know your rights. Number one, they cannot call you before 8 in the morning. They cannot call you after 9 at night. They cannot call you more than once a day if they talk to you. So that means that if I answer the phone and say I'm not home, and they leave a message, they cannot call me anymore that day. But if you look at the phone and never answer it, they can blow your phone up all day long until you answer it. Okay? They cannot talk to your husband or wife about the debt if they are not on there. And a lot of people don't know that. But if you call and ask to speak to me, if my husband answers and he is not on that account, they are not allowed to tell my husband about my account. Now, small companies who think we don't know the law may try that. But if they're trying that, I want you to get names and numbers and try to sue them because it's against the law. They cannot threaten legal action against you. So all that, we're coming to your house to pick up your furniture, or we're going to call the police, so we can call the police to put you in jail, all that's a lie. They cannot threaten legal against you. They just think you don't know that. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on your laws or, or what they can or can't say? Anything? They can't do anything. I mean, they can try to get a judgment on you, 
You can't get garbage sheet in Texas, but they can get a judgment on you. And what a judgment means is that they're going to have a legal piece of paper that says, I will execute on this person any way I can to get my money. And that execution could be a lien on your bank account. Okay? So if they get a judgment on you and get a lien on your bank account, they can take everything out of your bank account. So what happens is with situations like that, you won't see them. Not what you do. Can't do anything. And so they think you don't know that, so they threaten all kinds of things. Yes, that's a good question. Any other questions on bill collectors? My wonderful co workers. Anything? Okay. All right. Okay, now they do have rights, like at the bottom. They can proceed with garnishment when they can. They don't have to give you another loan. They have a right to um, try to execute on you. They can collect automatic draft fees, but whoever you owe, I want you to call. I do not want you to hesitate to call and say, I need some help with this debt. I need to try to get this paid off as soon as I can, as quickly as I can. Number one, can I settle it and can I pay it monthly or sell it? And if you have a lump sum of money, can I sell? I don't care. I'm going to give you ten dollars or ten thousand. Try and then see what they say. See what their counter is, because some money for them beats no money. And if it's charged off or in collections, they have already written it off anyway. So anything they get on this account is an asset to the company. Make sense? Because they already got a tax break when they say charge off. Okay. Hello. All right. Um, page eighteen is. Um, our wallets up, our minds open, and I am going to skip it even though I love it. But I want you to put homework on this page. And tonight before you go to bed, I want you to say this out loud. And everywhere there's a blank, I want you to fill in your name. Everybody got that? Everybody got it? Okay, ready. Yay. Okay. How to avoid foreclosure, page 19. I just want you to focus on what's in red. You see 886 Hope? You see that phone number? Put a star there. That um, that that government uh, whatever it is program is still in effect. They are still trying to help people save their homes. If you are struggling paying your house, you do not have to be past due. All you have to prove is that it's a struggle for you. They will refinance your home. Or they will help you. Now there are um, there is still like 52 percent of people who are eligible for help not doing that because they don't want to go through the paperwork. But I promise you, it's worth it. Call them. I'm struggling with my mortgage. Can you help me? Call this number. They will walk you through what you need to do to get some relief with your mortgage. And we need to do it now before there's new uh, a, a new political regime coming in, and you are not going to have these programs. All the deals with our school and all of that, you better take advantage of it now. Because if the wrong people get in into office, we will not see that. Okay? Uh, very good. Okay, how to keep your vehicle, page 20. The one thing I want you to know about that page is that talk to them. They don't want your car, they have modifications, reaffirmations, put a back, put a payment on the back. If you're struggling with a car note right now where it's always 10 days late, all I want you to do is call them and say you want a due date change. Just that simple. Because you can have one due date change on your car for the life of the car. So if your payments are due, let me make this simple for you. Your payments are due on the 10th of every month. And you happen to get your check around the 20th of every month. So every month you're 10 days past due. You pay a late fee, they're calling you. But you pay it on the 20th of every month. You call them and say, I want my due date change to the 23rd of the next month. Everybody follow me? Because they have the legal right to change your due date of your car 28 days. So not only will that give you relief for the month of September, but you really don't have to pay until the late October. And it's really just that simple. And they're going to say, well, Debbie, and they're going to say, sign this, and that's it. And your due date is changed. And that gives you a lot of relief. You can also check if you have credit cards that do the same thing. Because sometimes we're only late because our checks fall in the wrong sequence, okay? Any questions on that? All right, good, okay. My favorite page, 22 payday loans, my nemesis. Don't do it, long story short. If you have a payday loan, you gotta figure out how to pay it off. One thing I want you to do is call them and tell them I'm done paying it how much can I pay you every two weeks until I'm done? And they will make arrangements with you. 
The average payday loan is three hundred and fifty dollars. The average person that goes three times will go seven. Payday loans are outlawed in fourteen states because of high usury. It's still legal in Texas and Michigan, where I'm from, Chicago, where I teach, and Louisiana, Mississippi, where I teach. But there are fourteen states that have outlawed it because it's the biggest ripoff we will ever see. The interest rates are from three hundred to seven hundred percent, and they are only, only in our neighborhood. They are not in upscale, Montana, McKinney, Plano. Go look around them. They are not. But they're almost on every corner in our neighborhood because they are a ripoff. So if you are going to a payday loan because you need $350 or whatever, we've got to eat humble pie and ask sister so-and-so to loan us some money. And I will pay you back. That takes pride, doesn't it? I know it does, but that's what we got to do. I, I, I use this lady in church. She called me Rochelle. I, I need some money. I got an emergency. I need six hundred dollars. I know we, we don't even roll like that, but I need and I'm asking you. So I asked my husband and we loaned it to him. And she said I could pay you back in a month. And me and the sisters, she sits back there, I said, I'm here, he hangs, you know. And um so in a month she gave me an envelope and a pretty card and it was six fifty. And I went to her and I said, You gave me too much. And she said, I know what I gave you. I want to give your husband go to dinner. And I said, you don't have to give me this. She goes, you don't know how hard it was for me to ask you. And I don't know you. I don't even know you like that. But that's how desperate I was. So the very least I can do is take you to dinner. And then tears came to my eyes because it is, listen, more blessed to give. Hallelujah. Than to receive. What a blessing to be in a position to help somebody. Because we are responsible for tithing and giving. So not only am I responsible for tithing to my church, I'm responsible for seeing that my sister's hurt and just cut you 50 bucks and say, bless you, bless you, my sister. And that's a good feeling. Does that make sense? And so we need to be praying. Lord, multiply us so that we can help each other. Amen? Amen. There was no such thing as Social Security. We were helping each other. We took care of our own family. We brought in grandma and granddaddy and mama and daddy. There was no, you have got to, and we've got to get back on that. And how do you do that? By disciplines here. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. All right, amen. amen. Okay, so no payday loans. And get to $500 in a bank, and how do you do that? Starting today, figure out how to get $50 a month saved. Figure it out. As a matter of fact, I want you to go to Oh, I hope I put it in this book. Because I left it. I did. Okay. Go to get it. Okay. Um, page 23. It says getting $500 in the bank. Does everybody see that? I want you to take one, two minutes. Because I'm running out of time. And I want you to talk to your next door neighbor and tell them something on page, that page one through 13 that you're gonna do different to save you some money. Do you have a book? You two, you two share this, you three share this, you share this book. Come up there with my sister. You three share that one. And then I want you to talk about how you intend to save some money. I'm putting the foot to the fire. You're gonna look at somebody's face and talk to them about it. Do you guys have a book? Okay. Can you share your book with them so the author you can talk about it? <laughs> okay. Pressure. Pressure. <laughs> what can you do? Can you do anything? Can you change it? You don't have to look at all this? No. Um, what, what change can we make? Talk about it. And then if you can't make it, you just take it. I can't, I can't do any of this. <laughs> and then if you can't do any of it, I want you to ask the Lord to show you how to do it. Because what does it say? My father has cattle on a thousand years. You, you know what you want to do? You don't. Y'all talked about it. Huh? Try to buy nothing? I buy nothing on That's good. You try. Because here's the situation. Quite often, we don't commit. We go to the classes, and I'm so glad you're here. I, I, I pray for you guys before I come, and I say, Lord, send me people who want to change. And you need to know that this, 
This church is on my prayer wall. I pray for you guys all the time. But we have got to put our feet into action. We got to do it. We can't just hear it. Does that make sense? And so we got to make commitments. We got to say, this is what I know I need to change. Everybody got something? Amen? Okay. Yes, ma'am. One of the ways I have my soul is walking in Yes, ma'am. What I do, one of the, some of the ways I help myself is when I have people visiting from Nigeria, ah. I drop them at the mall. I don't go in with them. Because when you go in, you always see if I can say, oh, it's cheap, it's cheap, I want to buy. <laughs> then I, another thing I tell my children is, is it a want or a need? Amen. Do you need? Do you really need it? Or you just, I just want so if it's a if it's a one, you don't have to buy. Then another thing I tell my daughter is that she, because she loves buying clothes, uh -huh. I tell her that we are just making dinner rich. Yes. The children are going on cruise, uh -huh. and you are just you are, you are, you are investing your money there. Why don't you save? And then exactly. Those are the things I tell myself. And then great. I now look at my wardrobe. I'm like, I'm. I'm excited about Right, right. Very good. Give her a hand. Thank you. And that was a very good point. And we are here making them richer. And our responsibility is to plant a seed to our children. We can't bathe them. We can't put them in a headlock. We can't keep them, you know, in our skirt all day long. But we have to plant a seed. And, you ready? We have to be the example. And so once they see that we're doing it and that we're trying, they will follow us. Because even though they act like they don't hear us, they see us. And they know. Amen? Amen. Okay. So I'm glad you guys went through that exercise. If you didn't have anything, then that's your homework. And um, tithing, on the next page we talked about, I promise you there's a blessing in tithing. I want you to read the scripture related to that in your, in your, in your quiet time. And the same thing with giving and helping each other. You know, on page 26, if you have the opportunity, would you help people? You know, some people are just tired. I, I believe my baby sister actually struggles financially because she's cheap. I, I really believe that. My middle sister will give you the shirt off her back and she always has some. But my baby sister, if, what does it say? If your hand is closed, you can't get anything anyway. But she's so distrustful that she won't have anything, she won't let go. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so you got to ask yourself, am I a giver or am I a cheapskate? And Lord, help me release what's yours. It's not ours anyway. We are stewards over what he has given us. And so can you, do you, how can you? Do you separate it from your tithing? And then, <clears throat> how do you do that? We can't cover it. Quite often we want the wrong thing on page 26. We want the right thing for the wrong reason, and etc. And so you gotta ask yourself, is this me? And you gotta check that out and, and, and analyze that for yourself. Okay? Somebody has my book. Okay. Sorry, sweetie. All right. Because I am close to time. Okay, page 26, 27. I want you to figure out where your money should be saved. And it shouldn't be in a bank account in Bank of America. Oh, I have a savings account. Uh uh. 0.25% is no money saved. And people who have money have their money in IRAs, mutual funds, and all that. So I don't care if you have $15, I want you to go to a bank and ask them what is the safest, fastest way for your money to mature. And then they will talk to you about your age, what kind of risk you want to take, and all that. The stock took a plummet the last two weeks. It's still down six to seven percent year to date. But the stocks made 13 percent last year, and we really don't even know that. And the deal is that people who had those stocks made a lot of money last year. Now it's it's trying to. Um, uh, work its way back up, but it's still low. But you need to ask where bonds and stocks, because bonds and uh, stocks and all that kind of stuff. But I want us to start looking into that. Okay? All right. All right. Um, number 28, 15 reasons we spend more than we should. I want you to do that as homework. 
Some of these may hit us at home. Okay? Keep it up with the Joneses. Am I right? Okay? I have the page up for those who don't have it. Pastor, am I totally out of time? I am. I'm, okay, I'm going to talk real fast right now. Okay, key page, 15 reasons. Keeping up with the Joneses, avoiding the truth, counting chickens not hatched. You know, it'll be okay tomorrow. No, don't make on that. I'll have money tomorrow. Don't you do that. You'll be messed up. Okay? Uh, plastic doesn't feel like money. Immediate gratification. Ooh, it makes me feel good. I look so cute in it. Ooh. No. Stop. Don't even go to the store like my sister said. Uh, lifestyle maintenance. Poor as a child. Um, so I'm going to have stuff now. A sense of power. Prove myself worth. A lot of stuff I bought, I bought because I wanted to feel better than other people because I, I was right high in the company, and if I didn't know it, I wanted to look good. It was stupid, okay? Um, can't say no to myself, my kids are others. A lot of us are buying for our kids, and we can't say no. Never talk the importance of saving. I feel better with stuff, and I don't want to change my lifestyle. I, that's your homework. I want you to really look at that page and ask the Lord to help you search you and see what you've got to fix. Anybody see themselves on any of that in that page? Yeah. And so you gotta say, Lord, change me, and He will help us change. Amen. Okay, page 29. I just want you to read through it. <laughs> just ways to make adjustments. Page 30. I want you to uh, have a budget uh, budget worksheet, and I forgot it. I cannot believe this. But on the back page, on the back, there's a table. I brought hands out. It's, it's a ton of different handouts on stuff. Please go back there and tear off the sheets that you want. And I will drop by the budget sheet and give it to Pastor Beckley so that you can work on your budget. And then last and more important for me is page 31. And that's your dream tracker. And quite often, we get in so much financial trouble and family stuff and distress that we forget that God is the author and finisher of everything. And nothing goes through him that he didn't approve. And so we have to go back to the dreams and what is a burning fire in us and bring that back to fruition. So what I want you to do, I want you to actually take page 31 and I want you to sit down tomorrow after you thought about it and I want you to fill out this page. The one that's in blue, two things that you take from this workshop, I'd like you to do that tonight. So while my voice is still in your head, I want you to talk, think about two things that you learned from the workshop. I pray you learned something. And then the rest of it, I want you to fill out tomorrow. Will you do that, everybody? All right. And now, can you stand and can we say this, read this prayer together? Any questions before I close? Because I can do all I can and finish my time. Okay. Oh, while you're standing. This page is another homework. This is an asset sheet. This will tell you exactly where you stand financially. I want you to take this sheet, if you're married, you and your husband, and go through every single line item. If you have cash, if you have a deposit, if you have savings, mutual funds, if you have jewelry that's worth anything, that's an asset. If you have a house that you only owe 30,000 but it's worth 100, that means you have 70,000 in equity. That's an asset because you've got to know what your assets are. Then you look at your liabilities and you write those down. And then every month you start checking off the liabilities because I'm paying this stuff off. Does that make sense? Yes. Any questions on the sheet? Good sheet. And at the bottom, if you go to that website, you can fill it out you know, on, online. But I wanted you to have a copy to see how detailed it is. Any questions on it? OK. OK, can you stand with me? And uh, I hope everybody can have the back page. Because I don't think you can read that. Okay, so I will read with my sister here. Does everybody have access to and read with us? Okay. One, two, three, read. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for all you've given to us. We know you love us. We know you want the best for all areas of our lives, including finances. We know you don't really care where we're being. You only care about where we're going. Your son, Jesus Christ, said that we're everything in our pockets. 
you can make a donation, it will be highly acknowledged and appreciated in Jesus' name. Let's lift up our seed offering as we pray. Then after we share the goodness, we can drop it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the provision you have given to us. And as we drop this before you today, we ask for more blessing. Almighty God, we decree that this will bring increase to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask of you, Father, that as we drop our seed today, let the doors of financial breakthrough open unto us. We will not struggle financially. We ask, O Lord, that as we drop our seed today, our best will become our portion. I pray for all your children as they will be going on today, you will go with them. Make their ways prosperous. Lord, I decree that between now and Sunday, perform a miracle in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, show up and show forth as God. Cover all our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Cover all our children with the blood of Jesus. There shall not be evil, there shall not be disaster. So shall it be for you. Jesus, by the name we pray. Amen. Now, before we share the goodness, we are trying to ensure that we make um, the various teachings available. Uh, for now, we succeeded in having one. By the grace of God, by Sunday, more will be available. So, if you would like to have the audio teaching of the first uh, teaching of uh, Russia Global, I think that is the one we have available now. Uh, it's five dollars each. It's uh, audio CD. You can listen to it over and over again. And I'm working with them to ensure public they can package everything together, but that may take us a lot of time. So uh, by Sunday we should have more available, and I want them to package all the prayers in, in a section of its own, and all the teaching in a section so that we can have all of them as we desire. So if you would like to pick a copy of that, is with the usher, it does five dollars each, and that is uh, the first section of Russia Clover, and it will be a blessing to us all in Jesus' name. Shall we all share the goodness in fellowship? Surely, the Lord's goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our lives. We all shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and the Lord bless you and be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. We can drop our seed offering in the blessing of God in Jesus' name. Once more, we shall go thank you for being a blessing. We appreciate you. The Lord bless you, man. And to everyone that has come to church, God bless you. Everyone listening on the radio will appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, program continues on the prayer radio. You are blessed.